<clears throat> What's kind of your guys' uh, mindset going into this game, uh, especially coming off kind of a tough trip? We got we to gotta win. You know, it's a rivalry game. USC, UCLA, always a big game. I'm sure there'll be a, a great environment. And this is our last uh, Pac-12 game, you know, last regular season game for me ever. So I'm definitely really excited, and I'm glad that we get to play SC again, and and then we go into their house. So it's going to be a, a great, great game for us. It's going to be fun. So we're, we're excited. What's your favorite memory of the rivalry as of now? <sighs> so many, you know. You know every time I play, we play them, it's been it's been great. Favorite memory? Probably last year when they beat us. And in the first game, and then we came back and beat them. At, oh yeah, obviously not. When they beat us, <laughs> <laughs> and then we came back and beat them by a lot at home. That was that was a great feeling, and that was a big game for us. I remember. That was kind of a turning point for that for you for guys. Last, I think. Yeah, last year, losing to them. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Did you guys have like a, a nice meeting after that? And yeah. I don't really remember honestly. <laughs> honestly, I just remember that the win was really great for us. I beat them by a lot. Yeah. How does USC's home court advantage compare to uh, some other schools in the Pac-12? Just because it is a rivalry game, are their fans more vocal because it's a rivalry? Like, how, do, how does their home Yeah, court you know, uh, there's not not a huge difference between them and some other teams in the pack, but definitely the the rivalry, definitely uh, we can feel it in the environment. How much do you guys want to avoid? Dropping to fifth seed or lower for the Pac-12 tournament because then you have to play an extra day. Well, yeah, an extra game, and that's, that's obviously going to be a disadvantage if that happens. And for that to happen, we're going to have to lose, and we definitely don't want to lose. So, so we would we would love to avoid getting to that. Point. That's fine. These last couple games, you guys have been approaching with like, oh, we have to win every game. Well, obviously that didn't happen. So are you approaching this game any differently? Like, is there a change in the mindset knowing that, okay, now maybe our backs are truly against the wall? Well, it is against the wall, I think. And uh, we're approaching it just like you said. So I don't think there's a difference. We got to win. We're, we're trying to win. Uh, SC game, unless you meet them, unless you meet them uh, again in the... Uh, tournament how do you how are you feeling going into into it feeling good i mean i mean at the end of the day it's just two really good pac-12 teams uh vying for a, a better seed in the pac-12 tournament so and yeah being an la kid the last time in this rivalry is a big game as well so yeah just trying to make the most of it did you ever consider sc i did yeah okay. um in your in your first game against usc you guys kind of limited metu not to not doing too much. He had a couple dunks there and everything. And then against Utah, a similar big man, Colette kind of went off. What were the differences between your performances in those games to allow Colette to score like that and then Metu, you didn't really let him do that much? Yeah, no, I think and guys like that, I mean, yeah, Metu is still going to be able to have an impact on the game. It's just about trying to, to limit his impact. And the same for a guy like Colette. He just got away from us a little bit, made some tough shots for him. And, and yeah, but it's really just about doing everything you can to, uh, to follow the scouting report and just try to limit their uh, opportunities on offense. The, um, I know you probably guys want to avoid playing an extra game in the Pac-12 tournament. Is that is that a motivator at all this week? Definitely, yeah. Um, I mean, it's it's definitely a big difference in terms of winning the Pac-12 tournament uh, if, of winning four games in four days versus winning three games in three days. So, uh, yes, this will be a big game for us in terms of uh, how we we'll end up being seated uh, in the Pac-12 tournament. So, yeah, just having that in mind, just to add a little fuel to the fire going into this game. How much of an emphasis is emphasis is on first half play in this game because the last couple of games in the row it's been kind of a slow start for you guys and you're playing catch up the rest of the game trying to get back. I mean, it's just the emphasis is, is playing well for a full 40 minutes. Of course, you want to start as good as you can just to build a lead and, and just get yourself a good chance going into the second half. But uh, at the end of the day, it's just about playing hard, playing tough for a full 40 minutes. And, and of course, with doing that, you have to come out strong to start the game. So that's yeah, definitely going to be a big, uh, big key for us. Is this kind of a tournament intensity game in a way I mean you know playing SC at SC right before the Pac-12 tournament yeah I mean it's March in college basketball every game you play now has that much more meaning to because you're so close to the end of the year so uh, yeah especially considering it being a rivalry game it makes it just you know, like I said before just that much more fuel to the fire it's going to be a very intense uh, very tough game how different are they uh, I know Boltwright didn't really play much in the first game but um, obviously, he's out. Is that a big uh, difference 
for them the way they like to play? I think a little bit. I mean, he's he definitely was a main contributor uh, for them offensively and defensively. So, you know, obviously playing without him changes their uh, uh, just their style of play a little bit. Um, but at the end of the day, it's just about playing uh, the best we can with the five guys we have on the court offensively and defensively and just doing our best to execute our game plan. In the first game, Shaquan Aaron kind of, I know you, you were guarding him in the game, but he kind of came out of nowhere and had one of his best games of the season. Did that kind of catch you guys off guard, how much he was playing in that game, or can you kind of go through that? He has been playing. He, in, in games past uh, against USC, he has played pretty well against us. But, I mean, he's a really skilled player. I've played against him uh, in high school, and he does a lot of really good things for the team. And, and that's just kind of the way it goes in the Pac-12. There's so many skilled players on every team. If you give a guy opportunities, and a guy like him, especially as talented as he is, uh, they'll do a good job of uh, making the most of him. So, uh, yeah, just keeping that in mind going to this game, we want to try to just do the best we can to control him offensively. What are when you guys kind of broke down film of the of the mountain trip and and you know major adjustments going into this week? What were kind of some of the things that you guys wanted to tackle? I think we just had some lapses on the defensive end, just kind of stretches where we didn't uh, have the proper rotations and help to uh, get stopped, and we ended up giving up a lot of really good looks to the other teams. So um, I think yeah, going into uh, this last game of the regular season and into the Pac-12 tournament, uh, the key is going to be just to avoid those lapses the best we can, just try to stay on one another, keep each other accountable, and, and do everything we can to get stops and consecutively. Aaron, is it, uh, I know that was a tough trip for you guys. Is it good to um, have a, basically a week off before your next game, or did you, you want to do like chopping at the bit to kind of get back at it? Uh, it's always good to get rest during the season because we don't get that much. So I think that's going to help us have a lot more energy than we did in the Colorado and Utah trip. So. It should help a little bit. That's probably especially true for you as somebody who plays basically the whole game. Uh, yeah, it's always good to get treatment and rest and just chill pretty much. So I think it's going to help us a lot. Are what? you getting different types right. of treatment this season as opposed to the previous season just because you're playing more? Um, no, just the normal stuff like get my ru legs rubbed out, like a flush or whatever it's called, and the ice bath sometimes. So it's the same off season, during season. So. What makes SC so tough to beat uh, at their place particularly? Mm, they're always a good team to me. Our last couple of years, last three years I've been here, they've always been good. So, And even when they play at home, their crowd is usually big when we go down there. So they feed off of them and they hit a lot of shots. That's one thing that they do do is make shots. So as long as we just play defense, we'll be all right. How much do you guys want to avoid not having to play an extra game in the Pac-12 tournament? And if you win, I think you're in good shape for that. That would be huge. Uh, Winning four games in, I think, like four days, that takes a lot out of you. So if we could get that extra day off, that would help us a lot. In, in your first game against USC, you kind of limited Jordan McLaughlin to one of his worst games of the conference play. What were the keys to you doing that the first time around? I'm um, just going out there playing. Uh, my teammates obviously did a good job of helping when he's driving. And obviously, his passing ability is incredible. So they obviously took that away and helped me out a lot. So Go ahead. Speaking of pick and roll defense, I think against Utah and Colorado, you guys switched a lot more. Mm -hmm. Is that something that co that the coaches want to put in just for that road trip or is something that they want to put in you know, going forward? Uh, I don't know. You got to ask Coach Alfred that one. <laughs> you, um, coaches talked about you know getting 40 minutes of good basketball as opposed to 32 or 33. Mm -hmm. What's the, is there a key to doing that and kind of sustaining that good basketball for the full game? I don't know. We didn't do it all season, so. We just got to figure something out. Uh, I think we could do it for sure. So we just got to, when we're out there, maybe I just got to get on the guys and tell them to keep going pretty much. Uh, but if we do that, I think we'll be in good shape. So we just got to figure out how to do that. Does it surprise you that it's kind of taking you guys this long to just put together a 40 minute game? It's, what is it? It's March now. Yeah, I mean, I don't really think many teams have put together full 40 minute games, but the ones that do obviously are the top notch teams that are leading the nation. And, they're like probably ranked top 10. So, I mean, it's tough that it took us this long, but at the end of the day, we got to figure it out and win, so. How did you go about developing your leadership this year? Because obviously you went into that role as, as the starting point guard. Yeah, I mean, I always felt like I was leader, even through high school. I was usually the guy who talked the most and was able to lead and people respect me. So I just continue that here and I hope it works out for us throughout the season.